Good morning uh, here in Mexico, good afternoon uh, in The Hague. I'm very happy to participate uh, in this uh, seminar. Uh, I, I am very pleased to, to be sharing this um, roundtable with uh, Vladimir Tochilovsky, who is my colleague at the Working Group on Arbitrary Detention. Hello, Vladimir. And uh, hello to Emily and uh, uh, Emeric uh, Roger and, and, Will, and William Wiley, that I don't know him personally, but it's uh, a pleasure to, to share this, this table uh, with you. I apologize uh, because English is not my first language and, uh, and uh, for participating through this video link. Uh, this is the first time that I do this uh, participation through, through video link, so, so I apologize for the delay and, and all the technical issues that could, could raise. Um, are, are we okay? Okay, uh, well, uh, uh, as, as uh, Emily has already mentioned, Mexico uh, is uh, right now in a very dire situation on, 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 the, on the crimes that have been committed since 2006. Uh, maybe you all or are all aware that uh, in December uh, 2006, former president Felipe Calderón announced uh, a war against drug organizations. Uh, he, he said that this war will be a long war that will take a lot of lives uh, of, of Mexicans to, to recover the territories that have been um, controlled by criminal organizations. Um, Mexico is a state party of the Rome Statute since 2005 and uh, in, in December 2006 uh, President Calderon announced the first joint operative in the uh, southern state of, of Michoacan. Uh, the joint operatives uh, are uh, uh, operations, military operations uh, with, uh, with uh, police force as well and with uh, the Office of the Prosecutors and they deploy uh, a, a large amount of resources and uh, human uh, security forces to, to combat organized crime. Uh, this uh, policy has not changed since, since the change of government in December 2006 uh, since 2006 to 2000, uh, 2014, uh, more than half of, of, of the states of Mexico, Mexico is a federation that is composed of 32 states and Mexico City, and uh, mo most of the, of, of the states are under these joint operatives. In, in one of these, uh, um, in my presentation, you will see a map in which you, there are some of these uh, cases mentioned. Uh, the, the, the armed forces are doing work of the police. Uh, the, the, the deployment of, 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 of armed, armed forces to, to, to the states. Uh, there is not uh, uh, an official data of how many armed forces, but there is information that around uh, 60,000 uh, armed forces are participating in, in these joint operatives. Uh, we have, of course, uh, a lot of challenges in the documentation on, on, on crimes against humanity in Mexico. We are a small NGO, so uh, we have uh, limited uh, possibilities to document and represent victims of cases. But nevertheless, we represent uh, cases of torture, of arbitrary detention or murder by, by public servants and enforced disappearances. We also try to document the context of the human rights situation, uh, of the crimes against humanity situation in Mexico and the incidents through uh, requests of access to information to federal and local authorities, uh, to the offices of the prosecutors. We have 33 uh, offices of the prosecutors in Mexico. We request information to the ombudsman. We have a very large national human rights institution system uh, of, of one federal and one uh, and 32 local uh, ombudsman's office and we request information to the judiciary of the, of the whole judicial system in Mexico. We have uh, difficulties in obtaining uh, a lot of information of uh, the amount of 
persons that are participating from the army in this uh, security strategy because they claim that this national security information. So we have to uh, litigate in tribunals uh, the, 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 the request of information. We are also uh, using crime statistics by the national institution that compiles information on, on, on statistics, but the problem is that there, are, there is no information of the core crimes. The, 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 the information is based upon Mexican legal system, and the Mexican legal system does not offer the legal framework to investigate, prosecute, and punish crimes against humanity in Mexico. Uh, we also uh, use uh, surveys and results uh, that uh, can uh, show us some evidence on trends and hypotheses of work on uh, the crimes against humanity in Mexico. Emily has already mentioned uh, we have a, 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 a very important challenge to document uh, this type of crimes in Mexico because most of the NGOs uh, are not familiar with international criminal law. The, the expertise that NGOs have developed in Mexico is basically related to international human rights law and the use of the inter-American system. Uh, some of the organizations are already using uh, the UN treaty bodies, but uh, none of the two systems are uh, not uh, capable of dealing with a large amount of cases of torture, disappearances, and murders. Uh, for example, uh, putting all this data together, uh, we um, and you can if you take a look at the uh, Open Society Justice Initiative report, uh, you can you can uh, find some of this uh, information as well. But from 2006 till 2015, uh, more than 150,000 people were victims of intentional homicide in Mexico, uh, homicide related to the use of arm, uh, of, arm uh, of weapons and uh, violence related to organized uh, crime organizations or the response of the government to that organized crime uh, violence. Uh, from 2007 to 2010, Mexico was the country with the largest growth rate in international homicides. The annual number of intentional homicides reached the highest levels in 2011 to be located in 22.852. After that, it has been decreased, but it remained higher than before 2006. Um, the impunity rate has been increasing. Uh, uh, the, 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 the Office of the Prosecutor is not able to put uh, in process and to, to accuse before tribunals uh, uh, responsible from, from government that committed uh, murder. Uh, the, the, you will see the, 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 the statistics on, on how the homicides and, and murder have behaved in Mexico since 1990. You will see that uh, the, trend was, uh, the, the homicide trend was going down, and since 2006 it, it went uh, very high to its highest peak in 2010, then it has been decreasing, but it has been, it has been uh, stable. Uh, there was uh, a, a very interesting um, report that was produced by the National uh, University of Mexico, by the UNAM, uh, on the uh, fatality rate. And, and what they uh, realized is that, uh, that uh, in, in th there are Reports the, the the army of Mexican army and the and, and the navy have reported clashes or confrontations armed confrontations from these uh, armed forces with organized crime and they and the and the results from those con, con, uh, confrontations as that there are basically uh, very few people that are detained most of the people from those confrontations were killed they have an efficiency of killing. Uh, 15 civilians for every soldier that was uh, killed uh, in Mexico. Um, if you see the, one of the graphics that, that is in my presentation, uh, the, the information that Sedena, that the army was producing up to 2014, after that they have not been producing this information, is that, uh, that they, they, they reported 3,530 
six armed uh, confrontation clashes. And Mexico uh, has not been recognized as a country in which there is an armed conflict. But if you see the states in which those confrontations or clashes have been reported are in the same uh, states in which there are joint operatives, of course. Um, since uh, 2006 up to 2014, the National Human Rights Institution, the Federal National Human, Human Rights Institution, have uh, issued 60 recommendations on arbitrary uh, executions of, of, of murder by public servants. Most of the cases were um, under the responsibility of the Army and the Navy uh, from those um, 60 recommendations, more than uh, 40 of them, uh, 44 of them were uh, related to, to the conduct of the, of the Army and the Navy. Uh, there are uh, some uh, uh, gross uh, uh, cases uh, of, of massacres. Uh, you can see in, in, in the information that I provided you. I just put three examples of them. Uh, from uh, two from this administration, from this government that started in 2012, the Tlatlaya massacre, that is uh, the murder of 22 civilians uh, in the in the central state of Mexico by by the army, uh, and uh, the case of Apatzingan, in which the federal police committed extrajudicial killings of 16 civilians in the southern state of Michoacan. And one case uh, that has been um, uh, very, very grave of the massacre of 72 migrants in San Fernando, Tamaulipas. Uh, this uh, massacre has been at, uh, attributed to the responsibility of, of organized crime. Nevertheless, the investigations uh, have shown that there is a link between uh, these organized crime uh, organizations with local authorities. Therefore, there are local authorities involved as well in this, in this massacre. With regards to enforced disappearances, there is not a reliable registry on enforced disappearances uh, in Mexico, in particular the ones that have been carried out by non-state actors. Uh, the, 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 the Committee on Enforced Disappearances uh, has issued um, 214 urgent actions uh, to Mexico requesting adequate in the independent and impartial investigation of disappearances. Uh, we are the, the, uh, the highest um, state that has received urgent appeals by the Committee on Enforced Disappearances. There is a national registry of disappeared in Mexico. It's an official registry uh, that is information produced by, um, by, by claims, uh, of legal claims before the offices of the prosecutor of persons disappeared. Uh, the registry uh, uh, up to the most recent um, data from last month was of 28,161 people disappeared. And uh, we have to bear, bear in mind that um, Mexico, there is a distrust, uh, distrust uh, in general in Mexico of the justice sector. Over 90% of the crimes in Mexico are never reported to authorities uh, in the first place. Uh, that, uh, that, that information is relevant, especially in those places in which there is a lot of violence related to organized crime and violence related to the response of government to that organized crime uh, violence. Um, from 2006 to 2014, only two, uh, 229 cases are under investigation of the federal prosecutor. And since 2006 to 2015, we only have knowledge of seven judgments, final judgments from tribunals related to enforced disappearances. Uh, that, that, that doesn't have a relationship with the number of uh, recommendations issued by the National Human Rights Institution in, in these years, from the, 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 the period of 2006, 2014, 2015. This institution has received uh, 78 complaints uh, of for this period and have issued 11 recommendations. Uh, most of these recommendations are related to, uh, to cases involved of the Army and the Navy. 
uh, the, the recommendations uh, re reflect 45 uh, victims and in five of these 11 recommendations the victims were taken in certain moment to military uh, facilities. From local uh, national, uh, from local human rights commissions or, or the local ombudsman's office, they have registered 612 complaints of enforced disappearances, and we don't have information of the no number of judgments from local tribunals on, on enforced disappearances. Uh, I'm including two examples of of, of enforced disappearances. Uh, one is the case of uh, Jorge Parral. Um, Ramadan, that it uh, was a, a public servant uh, that was kidnapped by, by organized crime, and then there was an operative of, of the ar army uh, in, this in the security house in which uh, people were, were detained, uh, arbitrarily detained by organized crime, uh, and they were kidnapped. And uh, the soldiers uh, uh, yeah, killed uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, person that was uh, arbitrarily detained in, in, in the security house. Uh, he was fully identified. He has his uniform of the, of the institution in which he was working. And they hid the body in a mass grave in, a, in, in, in Nuevo León and, and after... Uh, a, a, a research by, by the family and, and, and us that we are the, the lawyers of the family, we found out that this person was disappeared for, for more than one year. Uh, the, the case of Ayotzinapa, I'm sure that you are all aware of the 43 students that were disappeared by, um, by the local authorities uh, alongside with organized crime. Uh, with regards to torture, there are at least uh, uh, 4,055 complaints uh, of torture uh, in front of the of the office of the federal office of the prosecutor. Only 1,000 of them um, were related to to armed forces, and, uh, and 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 as well, the the local prosecutors have received thousands of cases of of torture. Uh, uh, up to now, we, we have information that only 15 judgments of torture have, issued, have been issued in Mexico since 1991, that the, that the, uh, criminal, um, that the criminal defi definition was included in the, in the criminal code. Uh, just as we speak, Amnesty International is launching an, a new report of, of, of 100 cases of sexual violence of and, and torture against women uh, in Mexico. 82% uh, of these cases, 82 of these 100 cases, were cases of, of, of sexual abuse uh, from 2011 up to date. Um, it is interesting to see that most of these women were, were, were accused of, of being part of organized crime in 33% of the cases. 23% of these cases, uh, they accuse the women to be uh, part of organized, uh, uh, to be uh, involved in drug trafficking crimes, and 22% were uh, related or involved in, in, in accusations related to kidnapping. Um, the National Human Rights Institution, and, I'm, and I'm, I have less than five minutes, and I'm, I'm sure that I will uh, adjust myself to, to the time given uh, the National Human Rights Institution uh, from 2006 to 2015 has issued 81 recommendations of torture uh, and, uh, and um, they have issued as well 109 recommendations, additional recommendations for uh, ill treatment. 45% uh, of those 81 recommendations, that means 54% of those recommendations, are related to torture committed by the armed forces in the context of the joint operatives. Um, 17 cases, uh, 17 recommendations, uh, that means 14% 40 per of those recommendations are related to the Navy that also participate in the, these joint operatives. That means 68% are uh, recommendations issued against uh, the armed forces in the context of, 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 of the, the security strategies. Um, well, what, what, what are the, the final remarks that, 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 that we could make? Uh, nine years after the federal 
government launch. Uh, it, it was a federal government launch, but it has support by local governments as well. It's, it's not exclusively by, by, by a federal uh, policy. It's a national policy to combat uh, organized crime. Launched this security strategy, and uh, and, and that uh, security strategy has uh, produced a crisis in killings, disappearances, and torture. The change of government was an opportunity to change this policy in 2012, and it has not happened. The, the massacres, the killings, the disappeared, and the torture continues. There is a multiplicity of victims, and there is not uh, a probability of being isolated cases or accidental abuses by, by rogue uh, public servants. The increased use of armed forms, uh, or armed forms of armed forces is related to the lack of regulation and the control of the use of lethal force. Uh, there is a, a, a systematic omission, uh, a policy, uh, to not investigate, not to prosecute, and not to judge this, this, this crime. And uh, you should, uh, we should add to this that there is a, a policy to denial by, by high-level officials, by, 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 by some of the members of the, of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, by the, some of the members of the Ministry of the Interior, that de denying the facts, uh, criminalizing the victims, and uh, uh, accusing the victims of being involved in, in organized crime. That, that, that's what the report by, by Open Society Justice Initiative calls as falsos positivos. And you can see these falsos positivos in cases of murder, disappearance, and, and of course, in, the, in most of the cases of torture. So uh, I guess that this is, uh, I, I'm done with, with, with my time, and I'm, 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 I'm here uh, ready and happy to, to engage in a conversation with, with all of you. Thank you very much again for the organizing, organizers for, for enabling this system to, to be able to participate in this important seminar. Gracias.